Hi everyone, it's TTL back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at a Gigabyte Aorus M.2 NVMe drive that's only £114. Yes, that's correct, £114, and it's not a tiny drive either. It's a 512 gigabyte drive for that. Now, prices have come down a bit, but I didn't realise they'd come down that much. So I wasn't expecting it to be as quick as it was. So yeah, 512 gigabyte SSD NVMe M.2 for £114. Now that price is taken from Scan in the UK at the moment. They do do a 256 gig model for just £64. Uh, but one of the things I will say is because of the way that the drive's put together, the, the ones with less storage are actually a bit slower. So the 60, sorry, the 256 gig model, that is £64 does roughly 2,000 reads and 1,000 writes, whereas the 512 model is doing 3,480 roughly uh, reads and then around the kind of 2,000 meg writes mark. Now we have done some drive testing for you to take a look at, but one thing I will say right from the start is you can go to the OC3D website to look at all of the graphs. We've done a lot more ones there. There's more IOP sort of testing and everything as well. So you can click the link underneath or the link at the top just to click through to go and have a look. Now the um, the drive itself does come with a little heat sink over the top covering the bulk of the chips but there are a couple just hidden around the back but we didn't actually hit any um, uh, thermal issues or anything with the drive when we were pummeling it with our tests. And we do do a lot of loop testing as well to try and upset the drive game testing it didn't really hit any massive issues whatsoever either and it's not going to be something that's going to upset you but the other good thing with a little heat sink cover that is on the top is there is a little bit of colouring that available there now I know a lot of you don't like RGB so you can instantly turn it off if you want you can turn it off just for the drive or for the whole system if you want um, but one of the things I will say is it fits in really nicely with the RGB Fusion 2 stuff. Now with the Gigabyte stuff of old, the software wise, it was horrible because you had to install one bit of kind of holding software and then you had to install all the little applets that you wanted to use on it. Whereas the RGB Fusion 2 is now standalone. So you can just install this and control all your lighting. When you do uh, boot for the first time with the M.2 in as well, it will just instantly pop up in the software and then you can choose to add it in as like a whole package or you can change the colors individually. When it does come to the colors, you can obviously have it on all the loops, you can set it to static. There's some other bits that you can do with game modes, random modes, and even link it into music as well. But like I said, if there's those of you out there that aren't particularly keen on lighting with your systems, there is an off button to force it all off as well if you want. Now, I know a lot of people with uh, like light LAN leads because they don't have any lighting and that sort of stuff in them. So if you did want to go for that stealthy kind of look, then uh, you can flick it all off. Um, one of the things I would say is it does come with, the, the heatsink is kind of a silvery, but that does link more into the master and the extreme Z390 boards that are out there. And I think it may have been nice if Gigabyte had have done the silvery kind of effect one, but maybe had one with a black cover on it as well, just to be able to link in with those kind of people out there that want something a little bit more understated to sit in the background. But I did actually think that with the system that we built here today, apart from the GPU, if it was black, it would have fit in a little bit more nicely with this rig, depend and it wouldn't have mattered whether the lights were on or the lights were off. Now, the yes, the write speeds are slightly down, just being around the 2000 meg mark that you've seen before in the graphs that I popped up for you quickly, but it's still got obscenely high writes. Now, for around the 3400, 3500 meg, it's not going to top the graphs, but at the same time, it's not gonna empty your wallet like it was trying to either. And 2000 meg a second for a write is it's only really gonna affect you when you are doing big writes, you know, like maybe if you're rendering a video or something like that. But for normal kind of opening games, normal internet usage, opening programs and all that sort of stuff, 
it's probably never going to get stressed to the point where it's actually going to be hitting buffers anyway. So if you were looking for something that looked quite nice, decent sort of size, but without the wallet kind of emptying effect that you can get with some of the big brands like Corsair and Samsung, I actually think they've done a really good job because when you do think about it, it's not only it works relatively well, it's, you know, it's the, the writes are brilliant, the reads are good, but it comes in with that little bit of lighting as well, which don't forget if you don't like RGB and I call RGB the rainbow kind of puke changing colours all the time, you can always just fix it to a white or a red or something like that to fit in with the theme of your system. And for just 114 quid, it's a bit hard to kind of say no to. And it is actually nice to see Gigabyte finding some decent product ranges and then matching it in with the rest of the boards and stuff as well, because it does fit in relatively well. And it's only really if it was black that it would fit in with our Pro board. But like I did say, if you've got the Master or the Extreme, the silver colouring on the top of this heatsink actually works better with those boards straight out the box anyway. So a couple of little caveats would have been nice to have seen a black one. Uh, but beyond that point, at £114, it looks good, goes well. What's not to like? M.2 NVMe drive, that's only £144. And I got the price wrong already, maybe I'll add this to the fudge ups at the end. It's not only £114 for a, um, oh, what's not to like? Very waffly at the end.